I saw them from above. They were all killed. They start pushing people out of their houses. They were killing all children, women and old men. The voices you can hear are describing a massacre in a small village in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. These are the names and pictures of some of the dead, voiced by a man desperate to memorialize those lost on a holy day in November. Abraham, who we are not identifying for his safety, is one of the many memory keepers of Maryam Dengalat, inspired by a tradition from the Orthodox religion to name the dead so they are never forgotten. CNN has been able to verify the identities of over 50 people who were killed there over the course of three days. But there may be more than double that. This is the story of one village, but families across Tigray have been sharing pictures of loved ones with CNN, whom they say have been killed in the violence across the region. A simple memorial to a Sunday school boy eyewitnesses say was killed by Eritrean troops at Mariam Dengalat on one of the most holy days of the year, the Festival of St. Mary. The shoes you see mark the shallow grave of 15-year-old Johannes Yusuf. Abraham took the shoes off each body he buried and placed them on top of the grave so families could identify which grave was their child's. Yusuf was one of more than 20 Sunday school children killed that day. More shoes, marking more grave sites where the children were hastily laid to rest. <laughs> This video was secretly taken and smuggled out to CNN to avoid Ethiopian and Eritrean troops. The ground here is hard and rocky. Underneath the branches and sticks are the grave sites for the victims. These shallow graves are the best Abraham and those with him could do, he says, as Eritrean soldiers watched over them. At least it offers these small bodies some protection. But before we can tell you what happened, we first have to explain what has been happening since the beginning of November last year. It's been a tumultuous few years for Ethiopia. The Tigray People's Liberation Front ruled for almost 30 years until in 2018 demonstrations swept Abe Ahmed to power. Billed as a reformist, Abi won the Nobel Peace Prize for ending decades-long hostilities with neighboring Eritrea. Now Abi and his one-time partner in peace, Eritrean President Isyas Aforgi, are accused of working together once more. Eyewitnesses tell CNN Eritrean troops are supporting Ethiopian forces in their battle in Tigray. They say they recognize their uniforms and dialect. Ethiopia denies Eritrean troops have crossed into the region. But in January, the U.S. State Department said it had received credible reports of Eritrean troop involvement in the conflict in Tigray. And in a statement to CNN, they said Eritrean forces should be withdrawn from Tigray immediately. It is these Eritrean troops that villagers from Meriam Dengalat say entered and massacred their friends and family. Yet Abe Ahmed denies any civilians were killed during military operations. Through dozens of witness testimonies, CNN has been able to recreate how the massacre at Meriam Dengalat unfolded. We chose three witnesses with differing vantage points to illustrate the full horror of what happened on that day last year. We must warn you that the testimonies you're about to hear are disturbing and graphic. Those who spoke to us risked their lives to do so, and we used animation and actors' voices to hide their identity. The day had begun a happy one. Desta was helping to prepare for the hundreds of pilgrims who come every year to celebrate the festival of the Feast of St. Mary. Suddenly, he heard gunshots. He could see Eritrean troops blocking the entry and exit points to the village. He fled. I moved up to the mountain area. From a distance, I could see them taking people and shooting them. This is a map of Dangalat. It sits inside a valley. Here is the church where Desta sees what happens, and here is the village where people are returning from morning mass. 
Marta and her family were returning from morning church services when she saw people running. She headed quickly home, where she was confronted by Eritrean troops. They came to our house, then they told us to get out. There were a lot of soldiers outside, and they were saying, come out, come out, you bitch. We said, we are civilian, we are civilian, showing our IDs. They didn't ask any question. They just opened fire. Isaias, his sister, and his child fell to the ground, shot. Marta's husband, who was next to her, was also shot. I thought he was going to survive, but he died. This sketch is based on a real photograph taken months earlier. It's of Marta's wedding day. She is now expecting her first child. The killing continued. People told CNN some bodies lay out for as long as five days. The troops refused to allow them to bury the dead even as hyenas and vultures prayed. Abraham, the memory keeper, had taken refuge in Dangalat from the war and devastation in his home village. Today, he was helping clean the church ahead of the festival, but instead he became part of the team burying the dead, among them more than 20 school children in a mass grave. They were all so young, and they took them and killed them together in a field. Abraham and others registered the kids' names as best they could. One by one, the shallow graves were uncovered and parents came to identify their children. Some so badly disfigured, they could only be identified by their clothing. Back in Dangalat, Abraham and others revisit the mass graves. Surrounding them are some haunting reminders of what happened during the massacre. A bloody jacket, some rope used to tie the victims. CNN asked Abraham to mark where these graves are located. You can see here the blue paint he used. Using this footage, we were then able to identify the grave's location. In response to CNN's reporting, the U.S. State Department told CNN, reports of a massacre at Meriam Dengalat are gravely concerning and demand an independent investigation. 51 out of the 53 pictures you see here were victims Abraham tells us he helped bury himself. Many of these photographs are from identity cards Abraham retrieved from the bodies. Abraham and many others continue to keep record, continue to risk their lives to keep alive the memories behind each name. It's a litany of loss, but for now, it's all they have to hold on to. Ne'am al-Baghir, CNN. Thank you.